Hi, I'm Father Jonathan Meyer from All Saints Parish. A lot of people have built shrines in their homes. It's really awesome. Because a lot of our churches are closed, they're no longer accessible to us, people have actually built shrines in their homes. They've taken holy images and statues and they've put them all together and they create places of prayer, places of silence, places to watch mass online or adoration online. Someone the other day asked me the question, said, Father, you know, I have all these statues and pictures in my home, but I never really thought about it. But like, what am I supposed to do with them? I mean, I just had them because I was Catholic and I was supposed to have them, but can you pray with these? And I was like, heck yeah. So I want to just give some tips on how to pray with sacred images. First of all, look around you right now. Literally, look around you. How many images do you see? Like, whose picture is on the wall over here? Or who's on the wall over here? Or who's behind you? For me, it's St. John Vianney, the Blessed Mother, the Blessed Mother, Jesus. St. Francis is back there. Why do we have these images, and how are they calling us to be saints? I'd like to put forth three things, and how we can allow these images to aid us in our prayer. Now, we know as Catholics, we don't worship images. Sometimes people criticize and say, oh, you worship images, and you're pagans, and you're, you're idolatry. No, we're not practicing idolatry. This is no difference than like your grandma pictures being here, or your aunt's picture being here, or your uncle's picture being here, or a picture of Michael Jordan being right there. Why do we have pictures in, in general? Three reasons. One is to remind us to remind us of who they were. Why do you have a picture of your grandma? To remind you of your grandma. Why do you have a picture of Michael Jordan on your wall? I realize Michael Jordan might not longer be on your wall, but like when I was in high school, Michael Jordan was definitely on my wall. Why was Michael Jordan on my wall when I was in high school? Because I wanted to remember how awesome he was. Why do you have a picture of your boyfriend or your wife or your children on the wall? You want to remember them. So why do we have pictures of the saints? We want to remember them. We want to remember their lives. We want to remember who they were. Why do you have a picture of Jesus on your wall? You want to remember who he is and what he did for you. Why do you have a pic crucifix? To remember you, to remind you that he loves you. So number one is to remember. Number two is to inspire. The life of Jesus is the most inspiring life in the world. Someone who loves someone so much that they're willing to die and then conquer death and then desires to take us with him to heaven forever. The life of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the most perfect follower of Jesus, who endured pain and suffering in the cross with her son and desires us her sons and daughters, her fellow believers as well, to be faithful in following her son, Jesus? Or my favorite saint, St. Francis of Assisi, who's right behind the camera right there. St. Francis of Assisi, <laughs> a young man, a young adult who gives all of his possessions away, lives a life of radical poverty, serving the poor, embracing lepers, this guy's life was amazing. St. John Vianney, he's my, one of my favorite saints right over here. We spend 14 hours a day in the confessional absolving sins. That's inspiring. That's heroic virtue. So we have these images to remind us, but we have these images actually to inspire us, which means to put the spirit of God within us, to call us to greatness. Why do you have a picture of like your grandma over here? or your uncle over here. Hopefully because you found their lives to be inspiring and you want to actually live your life like them. You often don't hang up pictures of people in your home that you knew biologically or th that don't inspire you or that you didn't like. Number one, these images are there so that we can recall and remember them. Number two, so we can be inspired by them. And three, so that we remember that we're not alone. You are not alone.
in the midst of this corona pandemic, you are not alone. Jesus is with you. And that image of the sacred heart that you have of him, or that image of the crucifix that you have of him, or that image of the good shepherd that you have of him, reminds you that you are not alone. I am here with you. As Jesus says, be not afraid. These images of the saints that are around you, they remind you that we believe and we profess in the communion of saints. And this is the great thing about the grandma picture you have over here and the uncle picture and your dad and your kids. They're part of the communion of saints as well. It's not just canonized saints that are in heaven. We believe that those who die in righteous relationship, that those who die in the state of grace, that those who die, that they're with the Lord right now. And that's where one day we want to be as well. So my brothers and sisters, allow these statues to remind you, to inspire you, and to give you comfort knowing that you are not alone. We don't worship statues, but you better believe that they aid us in our prayer. And thanks be to God. My dear brothers and sisters, may we continue with God's grace to pray in our homes and one day pray back in our churches. And while we do so, we will become the saints that God is calling us to be. Amen.